I look for Yuna to try and break loose for a couple of dunks or whatever types of plays they could get. This game's pretty much over. And a uh, three-second call, I believe. And Howard Flowers coming back in for uh, Gary Hankerson on the wing. Thompson leaves Marshall Hamilton for Huron. Hamilton, of course, played the excellent ball game, getting seven points, but more importantly, a number of steals and assists. Yeah, I'd really, I'd be interested to see how many steals he had. He really made things happen on defense. In the corner, Flowers to Robertson makes the move through the legs in traffic. Looks like he picked up, he drew a foul. Steve Boyd coming back in for Lauren Uhais. Robertson will go to the line. There's 342 left in this one. 70 to 48 here on Leeds. A 22-point ball game. Pretty impressive move by a fellow 6'6", Eric, between the legs there. Look real smooth. Traffic. Well, we look forward to see him play at, at Wisconsin next season in the Big Ten. It should be a good one. Uh, we know he's an excellent ball player, and that'll be a tough ball for him in the Big Ten. But first, he's... Wisconsin would be a good school for him to go into. They're doing pretty poorly this year. Might be a chance for him to break in and get some playing time. We'll have to wait and see. Absolutely. First, they got a very big year to finish up here at Wayne. And uh, a good pass from Boyd. Picks up an assist to Jim Stark. Penn Stark having a big ball game. Off the glass for two more. It's 72-48, a 24-point lead for Ann Arbor. Here on River Rats, Alvin Allen, another J from outside, off the rim. Stark with a rebound. He's got a lot of rebounds today, too. Stark and Barnett really combined to do a real good job in the middle today. Polakowski, this Paulus Robertson and so spin move off. breaks the press to Stark. And I agree with you there, Gino. They've done an excellent job under the boards. Huron might have even surprised me a bit under, with their very strong rebounding tonight. Lewis with the, the pass inside to Stark and no, nothing going. It's stolen by Wayne. Stolen back by Steve Boyd. He's got Ken Thompson in the middle, but he pulls up a wise move as they really didn't have the advantage there. It was two on two. It's just the mark of a well-coached team, you know. Pull up when they don't have the break. Boyd saves the ball inbounds, but Robertson steals it for Wayne. And Howard Flowers making the move. He travels. Ken Johnson making the call for the referee there, but it turned out to be the correct one. Absolutely. Chris Banks coming in for Huron and replacing Alex Polakowski, who's had a fine, fine game scoring. 18 points from here on, only picking up one foul, getting a number of assists, and looks like we've got a timeout here called by... I, I don't know who called the timeout there, Eric. I can't, can't imagine there's much strategy left in a 24-point game with 2.27 left. What a boost for Huron's program to completely blow out. Looks like this will be a splash on the front page of all the sports sections around the state. A big upset, and uh, and it's got to make Huron feeling good, peaking like this at the end of their season. So, what a great game to have coming up to the tournament, you know, blowing out a highly regarded team. Absolutely. Help and this could turn out to be a, a, a very key game, a turning point for Wayne. After losing one like this, we look for them to come back strong in their next few games. Sometimes an undefeated team that hasn't tasted a loss, you know, they, they lose their first game and it just makes them play a lot better after that. We'll have to wait and see. I think it'll make Wayne a better team. To, they'll be able to look at this game and learn from their mistakes and come out. They'll be more aggressive and, and fight harder in their next few ball games. And uh, it's good for them to be challenged like this, I believe, uh, you know, this season. I know Coach Henry definitely wanted to see a challenge. I'm sure he would like to see his team rise to the challenge a little bit better, but, yeah, you know, it's only one ball game. Really? It was cold shooting, and uh, it did, did them in, I'm afraid. Chris Banks got away with, like, two steps there, but it really Ken doesn't Thompson. matter too much at this Down point. Down on the wing, and good pass by Boyd. To Stark, it's knocked out of bounds by a Wayne player, and it's a 24-point ball game, 72-48, with 2.14 to go in this one. And Boyd inbound for... Huron. Stark out there looking to pad his scoring average. He's played real well tonight. He is. Oh, he's having a big, big game. And out of bounds off of Steve Boyd. Two minutes to go in this one. And bringing up the ball for is uh, Spence Williams. He's had perhaps a so far game, I believe, for he's Wayne. Been, he's been relatively signed. Only three points, not many assists. Flowers, a tough move to the hole. He's fouled by Jim Stark, who picks up... His uh, third foul, I think, and 
and uh, Coach Simon's having a word with him. There's only two minutes to go, but that doesn't make, make a difference to Harold Simons. If he's got something to tell one of his ball players, it, whether they're behind or ahead, no, get, no time left in the game or after the game is over, he's going to say it because he wants to stress the uh, points that he makes to his ball players. He's an excellent coach. Harold Flower from the line misses. Yeah, Harold Simons is an excellent coach, Eric. You can just see it in the way their team plays, breaking the press, pulling up the break when they don't have it. They play well. They play exciting, but they play under control. Absolutely. An excellent discipline team and uh, all unselfish good ball players who uh, pass well and play hard the whole, ball, the whole game. Ken Thompson, double team. A foul by Robertson. And Robertson fighting to the end, playing tough, tough defense there. And picks up a foul, but you gotta admire his spirit, uh, playing as a center, playing on the, the press, and uh, picking up a foul, but playing hard, you gotta admire that. Ron Smith checking in for Huron, replacing Jim Stark. Ron Smith is, is a senior. He's 6'1", 155 pounds. He's getting some light in this one. Ken Thompson with the ball up top. Cross court to uh, Chris Bang. He's got Boyd, who hits Thompson, cutting the hole, and he drops the pass. A good pass from, from uh, Steve Boyd. And uh, Alvin Allen with the ball. I look for Boyd to come out here in a minute and let some of the people we don't get a chance to play much get a little a few minutes against Boyd. Yeah, give the hometown fans a chance to cheer him for his excellent game. And it looks like you called that one because Harold Simons is moving down the bench and he's calling somebody's number. And uh, well, but Boyd's gonna inbound the ball. A minute 29 to go in this one. 72-49, 23-point lead. Very, very impressive game for Huron. And Chris Banks, keeping his head up, getting hit Ron Smith with the pass to break the press. Summons is on Banks. And the jumper by Ron Smith is no good. An outlet to Her Howard Flowers, driving the hole. He hits, Summons passes behind him a bit, and Smith picks it up. And it's stolen by Summons to out to Spence Williams off the glass making it a 21-point ball game. Howard Flowers, after scoring 10 early, hasn't done a thing all game. He's been he's completely silent the second half. Driving the hole for Huron, number 10, Terrence Thompson. Who dishes to Steve Floyd, and there's a foul. We're under a minute to go in this one, Tino. Huron leads 72-51, with Steve Floyd going to the line to add to that lead. And uh, Steve's had an excellent game. Wayne is even with 50 seconds left. They're not giving Steve any free ones around the hoop. He went up and about three guys tried to block his, block his shot there. That's right. Steve sit for 15 in this ball game and has anchored the, uh, the River Rat defense and rebounding by pulling down a number of. And of course he got that boards. jam that got the crowd completely fired up. It's probably after the fact, but certainly an exciting play nonetheless. Absolutely. He misses the first. Perhaps a little trouble concentrating at this juncture. Summons comes out for Wayne, replaced by number 35, Daryl Cotter. And Mark Robinson is out. We'll sit down for the Wayne squad. Number 32, Joe Lloyd, comes in and sees his first axe in the game, Eric. Steve Boyd will shoot his second shot. And he sinks it. For 16 on the night. They've had some balanced scoring tonight. One of the keys for Huron in this ball game. And uh, the pass to Flowers, the long jumper, is good. Howard Flowers hits a J. His first and two since the end of the second, first half. Excuse me, Eric. Wayne playing aggressive defense to the end. Terrence Thompson breaks the press. Get and picks up a foul on Spence Williams. before Terrence Thompson lost the ball and picked up the ball. Thompson's only a junior playing on the varsity and with the graduation of Hamilton and Polakowski this after this season, we look to him to get some some uh, playing time. Yeah, there's play a lot time of young year. players on here and who look to be playing a lot next year. Thompson looked good on that. 
foul shot. Excellent form in all net. It's the first end, front end of a one-on-one. Got the goal on the second. It's 75-53, 22 point lead for Huron. And they've completely dominated this one. The pass inside from Robertson. I think that play was kind of typical of the way things went for Wayne all night. They moved the ball around, someone's open underneath the hoop, they don't even get him the ball. Really, essentially, the fact that it was a turnover illustrates that point because they've turned the ball over way too many times this evening. Lewis, oh, Boyd was sky high for that rebound. Steve Boyd, another two for Huron. They're still crashing the boards. And there's two seconds to go. Flowers at the buzzer. Hits for Wayne Memorial. But Ann Arbor Huron, in a surprise, big upset win, beats the Wayne Memorial team 77-55 by 22 points. And a very impressive game by Huron tonight. Yeah, the, the game uh, really was never close, except for maybe the first three or four minutes of the game. Huron jumped out to a 10-point lead after the first quarter and led by 13, 41-28 at halftime and never let up in the second quarter. Huron playing tough, aggressive defense, had no trouble with Dwayne Fresh tonight and just moved the ball well, shot well, played an all-around fine basketball. Basically dominated the game in every phase. Polis Robertson got his 20, but there were really a lot of them after it didn't matter. They held down the big guns and everybody on Huron played exceptionally well. Well, you've got to be impressed with Huron. They should move up in the rankings after this one. And we'll be back in a moment with a word with head coach Harold Simons and perhaps one or two of the players from the Huron squad after this. Want to look good and feel better? Memorial. This is a solid backcourt combination for Huron, both seniors. And uh, they started pressing you from the beginning, Marshall. Did you have any problem with that press today? No, we've been working on their press in practice, and um, me and my boy try to pick up what, what kind of press is they trying to press us. And if they trying to, like, three mans in front, we just slow it down, try to pass over it instead of dribbling into it. All right, and you did a real good job breaking that press today. You cut down your, kept your turnovers low and uh, forced some on the Wayne team with your aggressive defense. And uh, that's got to be a key to the game today with the defense you guys played. Led to a lot of baskets. Yeah. And Alex Polakowski had another fine game, hitting uh, a lot of points from the outside. Hit for about 18 tonight. And uh, how did it feel out there today, Alex? Well, it was a good game. We had control of it from the start. Our defensive pressures were really running for us, I think. Absolutely. Defense was the key. Solid ball by Ann Arbor here on a big win today. And we got the whole team here getting into it. Huron beats Wayne Memorial, number four in the state. 77-55. Congratulations, guys. Steve Boyd and Mike Lewis, a couple of the other stars of tonight's game. How did you feel to beat this uh, fourth-ranked team by 22 points? Great. What, what do you think the keys to the game were? Why did you guys beat them so soundly? Good defense. And, and a lot of rebounding, key rebounding. Playing smart and intense. It looked like you guys had no problem with the press early on. They were trying to put some pressure on you, but you broke it easy, you know, easy early for some easy baskets. Oh, uh, yeah. Like in practice, we practiced on breaking all sorts of full court presses, what they was going to come with. So did it feel pretty good to get that slam towards the end of the game, get the crowd all fired up there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm here with Coach Harold Simons after a very impressive victory over Wayne Memorial. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Was uh, preparing for a team such as Wayne, were, did you uh, look at this game any differently than any other? Well, as far as a coach's standpoint, it's actually quite easy to prepare for a team that's 14-0 and, and, and ranked in the state. It's the games where your ball players, or at least you interpret that your ball players are taking that game a little too lightly. That's when you really have a job as a coach to try to get them ready. Wayne came out with a full court press right from the beginning, but it didn't seem that Huron had any trouble with that. Do you attribute that to uh, practicing against the press in practice? Why, yes, that, and I attribute it to the fact that we played uh, Ypsilanti on Saturday. Uh, they were doing the same type of full court pressing that Ipsy did against us, so we had like a game before this one to prepare us for that type of a press. An aggressive defense by the River Rats forced numerous turnovers in that first half that enabled you to jump out to a big lead. Um, 
did you key on any of the Wayne uh, ball handlers in particular or stress anything that, that perhaps led to those turnovers? We stress nothing uh, any different than we do for any other game, and that's sound team defense. Uh, I, I think perhaps that Wayne uh, was not used to the type of defense that we played on them. Uh, with their schedule, with their league, with them blowing teams out, as I saw in the newspaper, by 20, 30, even 40 points, they really didn't have the defensive pressure on them those other games that we applied to them today. And Huron rebounded very strongly today, uh, perhaps um, stopping the Wayne team from running like it likes to. Well, our team loves to run itself, as you well know. That's a big part of our game. And as we told them, if you don't control the boards this evening, you're not going to have your running game going, and they're not very happy when they're not running. So they did a real good job on the boards. All right, and big game from Bernard Barton and Jim Stark on the boards. Bounce scoring tonight. Very impressive all-around game for you, Coach. Well, we're hoping that the, the two centers, Bernard Barton and Jim Stark, will hold up their share of the inside part of the game. And when one might falter a little bit, we're sure that the other one will pick them up. And as you said, they had real good outstanding performances. So it seems that you're peaking toward the end of the season. Are there any teams that worry you uh, left on the schedule? Every team worries me, <laughs> Eric. You know that uh, as a, we open up our comments here, uh, it's a matter that, uh, you know, the kids might have taken South Florida line a little too lightly, figuring that that wasn't too much on our schedule, and they gave us one battle, heck of a battle, at their place. So the, the, uh, the team should realize now everybody's out to get us. Uh, we have to win our games, our three in the league, in order to be the league champion. So we have a goal in mind and a purpose in mind, and, and we have to meet the challenge. So first, it's win the South Central, if you can, and then on to the districts. The best of luck. Good luck for the rest of the season, Coach. Thank you very much. Okay. this evening you're not going to have your running game going and they're not very happy when they're not running so they did a real good job on the boards all right and big game from bernard barton and jim stark on the boards bounce scoring tonight very impressive all-around game for you, Coach. Well, we're hoping that the, the two centers, Bernard Barton and Jim Stark, will hold up their share of the inside part of the game. And when one might falter a little bit, we're sure that the other one will pick them up. And as you said, they had real good outstanding performances. So it seems that you're peaking toward the end of the season. Are there any teams that worry you uh, left on the schedule? Every team worries me, <laughs> Eric. You know that uh, as a, we open up our comments here, uh, it's a matter that, uh, you know, the kids might have taken South Carolina a little too lightly, figuring that that wasn't too much on our schedule, and they gave us one battle, heck of a battle, at their place. So the, the, uh, the team should realize now everybody's out to get us. Uh, we have to win our games, our three in the league, in order to be the league champion. So we have a goal in mind and a purpose in mind, and, and we have to meet the